Hello, brothers and sisters, once again. It's Carpo. Totally coming to you from this place. This place of life worship. This place of love. My garage office. <laughs> uh, well, I had a few different ideas in my mind lately, but I'm thinking about kind of turning off the camera for a little while, but before I do, I wanted to make a video here about, uh, about knowledge, about truth, and um, what constitutes a valid truth. And this is something that I've really been considering lately. I've uh, there seems to be a, a a widely varying degree of different thought on who we are as humans, why we're here, and most of all, beyond the roots of us or where we're going, what we're supposed to be doing right now. Now, this third point, what we're supposed to be doing right now is, I believe, the most important thing for us to know. Knowing our roots, knowing our ancestors, having knowledge and smarts is all great and important. But the ultimate goal that I'm searching for personally is what should I be doing with my life right now? Now, there are people out there who will say, well, you're doing it. There are people who are out there who are saying you're missing it. There are people out there who say the point is to love, which to an extent is true. There are people out there that say the point of life is the search for knowledge, which to a degree is true. But, and some people will say it's for God, which maybe to a degree is true as well. But I think that the most important thing isn't the irrelevant facts that we debate. Because I've been... I've been immersed in a lot of different news type stations and channels that I watch at various times. And I'm, I've begun to come to the conclusion that, you know, if, if you don't agree with what someone's putting out there, the information that they're presenting, it's easy to just walk away from it and just to ignore it. You don't have to be part of that. On the other hand, you want to present your side of the story to people, but sometimes when you do, you get attacked for it. Now, anybody who's attacking other people is completely missing the boat on what it means to search for truth. Because a man should never cast aside another, a person should never tell another that they're wrong. However, when you truly believe that your specific truth is more real than another person's. It's easy to get caught up in an argument or a debate or a philosophy about who's right. This, I think, has become counterproductive. Now, there are certain obvious truths. Now, we could debate religion or politics all day long, but there's no solution there. And what I'm getting at here is that there is no reason that we can't all search in our own ways and find our own truths and get along without casting stones at one another. But I think that the most important concept to remember is what is this truth doing for you and for the world around you? Now I really want you to consider that for a minute because I think that's a very important point. We get so wrapped up in what we're learning and what we found and the truths that we know Sometimes we forget how that might benefit or not benefit us or the world around us. In other words, if knowing that someone did something or the government did this or this group did that, if that is empowering you somehow to make a change beyond just talking about it, okay? Now, talking about the problem does not bring change. Talking about it may bring awareness to a degree, but at a certain point people have to step up and say, can I do something about this? And if they can't, then they need to step aside and, and realize that there are other issues to deal with. What is affecting us directly? What is affecting us as, as a group, as a collective, and as individuals? 
And how can we change those things? And that's what I want to see, is more solutions and less of this, um, this, this competition, this competitive nature that truth seems to have on the internet, especially. That people seem to compete to say, no, I have the truth. No, I have the truth. And I just shake my head at it all and say, you know, if you're competing, if you're setting yourself up as a competitive person, if you're saying that, if you, if you assume that you're being attacked, if you assume you're being pursued, if you assume that the dark sides are coming after you and, and your truth, then you will attract those things. In other words, if you say that you're being watched, you're being, you're being um, wronged, or you're being lied to, or whatever it may be, you're manifesting that reality for yourself. It's causing this big, dark cavern of half-truths that I'm seeing all over the internet. And this goes to so many different realms. You know, it goes to... It's not just government stuff. It's not just that. It's, it's, it's aliens. It's, it's chakras and, and, and new age beliefs and religions and, and political theories and the people out there saying, fuck Obamacare, they've never even read it. Or the people out there saying, uh, you know, fuck Republicans just because they're another team. Or another person saying, fuck religion. Or another person saying, fuck you. Or fuck you. It just goes on and on. And, 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 and the, the, uh, the time it takes to dispute and argue your point, it's really not worth it. Um, I used to be a very defensive person. And uh, over the years, I've train been training myself to try to get over that. Because I think it's in our nature. Now, <laughs> this is the philosophy to this, okay? There's a, theory, there's a, a, a saying that goes, it's better to be feared than to be loved. And the philosophy lecture that I was listening to yesterday at work actually included that very saying, and they were talking about leadership and what leaderships have worked over history. And I was talking about Plato and Socrates and the different ideas that they had towards leadership. And the idea of being feared over being loved is that a leader that is hated is always more successful at his job. Maybe not hated, a leader that is feared, a person who is feared is more respected and they have more authority. It's just the way that humanity works, or at least this is the philosophy behind this particular aspect. That if a person is feared, it's better than being loved as a leader, because if they're loved, people will be like, okay, yeah, we love you, but we're not going to listen to you. You have to be respected, and respect is earned. And unfortunately, it's a, it's, you can trace this back to primates. It's our dominating genes. It's the way that we behave as humans. And I'm not saying it's right or wrong. These are philosophies that have been argued for a thousand years. I mean, it's nothing like uh, new or to come forward and say, you know, that there's good and bad or that, you know, that fear is good. I, I even would go as far as to, you know, when I heard Nelson Mandela died the other day, RIP brother, good man, he was offered many plea bargains to get him out of prison over his 27 year, I think, incarceration for standing up for rights. And he refused those offers. He did his time. And, you know, one of the things that Mandela did was, well, he did a lot of things. But uh, it's the way that these leaders promoted self-expression and freedom. But, let's see, how do I, I kind of lost track here. I... I really wanted to make a point on that, the Mandela thing. Um, yeah, he did something. Anyway, a lot of these leaders through history, these people who have made big differences, they're willing to sacrifice their lives and their uh, their freedoms, you know, for for the truth and, and, and freedom of others and it's it's an amazing thing t for me to watch and I just feel completely stupid for losing track on the, the total point I had so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hang this up and I'm gonna make a part two because I have to see I had a point to make and it's gotta be made <laughs>